According to Quran, I just want you to help me out. Jesus Christ he is not a God, but his position is unknown. Jesus was crucified for all our sins. Being a human, I get confused. My mom was Christian and my father was Muslim. Why do we need a religion like Islam? In my opinion, you are the most rational, logical, easy to understand kind of scholar that I've ever come across in my life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All praise belongs to Allah and to Allah alone. May His peace and blessings be upon His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our guest today, answering all of your questions as part of this segment, ask Dr. Zakir, is our dear Sheikh, Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik from India. A medical doctor by professional training, Dr. Zakir is renowned as a dynamic international orator on Islam and comparative religion. Dr. Zakir Naik is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation, Mumbai. Dr. Zakir clarifies Islamic viewpoints and clears misconceptions about Islam using the Quran, the authentic sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and other religious scriptures as a basis in conjunction with reason, logic, and scientific facts. He is popular for his critical analysis and convincing answers to challenging questions posed by the audiences after his public talks. In the last 15 years, as of the year 2011, Dr. Zakir Naik has delivered more than 1,500 public talks. He delivered more than 1,500 public talks in the USA, Canada, UK, Italy, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Botswana, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, Guyana, Trinidad, Mauritius, and many other countries. In addition to numerous public talks in India, he has successfully participated in several symposia and dialogues with prominent personalities of other faiths. His public dialogue with Dr. William Campbell of the USA on the topic the Quran and the Bible in the light of science held in Chicago, USA in April 2000 was a resounding success. His interfaith dialogue with prominent Hindu guru Sri Sri Ravi Shankar on the topic the concept of God in Hinduism and Islam in the light of sacred scriptures held at Palace Grounds Bangalore on the 21st of January 2006 was highly appreciated by people of both faiths. Dr. Zakir Naik was featured in the Indian Express list of the 100 most powerful Indians in 2009 and again in 2010 amongst the billion plus population of India. In the special list of 2009 of the top 10 spiritual gurus of India, Dr. Zakir Naik was ranked number three after Baba Ramdev and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, being the only Muslim on the list and topping them all in the 2010. <laughs> Dr. Zakir Naik has been placed in the top 62 in the list of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world, published by the George Washington University, USA. 
Shaykh Ahmed Didat, rahmatullahi alayhi, the world famous orator on Islam and comparative religion, who had called Dr. Zakir Naik Didat Plus in 1994, presented a plaque in May 2000 with the engraving awarded to Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik for his achievements in the field of da'wah and the study of comparative religion. Son, what you have done in four years has taken me 40 years to accomplish. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Dr. Zakir Naik appears regularly on many international TV channels in more than 200 countries of the world. He is regularly invited for TV and radio interviews. More than a hundred of his talks, dialogues, debates, and symposia are available on DVDs and VCDs. He has also authored many books on Islam and comparative religion. The ideologue and driving force between Peace TV Network is Dr. Zakir Naik. He launched Peace TV English in January 2006. It's being the largest watched Islamic as well as any religious satellite TV channel in the entire world. With over 100 million viewership, of which 25% are non-Muslims. In its footsteps, he launched Peace TV Urdu in June 2008 and Peace TV Bangla in April 2011. I invite to the stage to join us, taking your questions and giving answers, our dear Sheikh, Dr. Zakir Abdul Karim Naik. Insha'Allah, for tonight's session of question and answers with Ask Dr. Zakir, we have five mics set up. The first mic is in the front for the brothers. The second is on the left-hand side, and the third is on the right to the rear. And then we have two mics for the sisters, one on the right-hand side and one in the middle on the rear. We'll be taking questions first from the brothers, and then from the sisters. Now please ensure that we follow the rules of the question and answer session. That is, we give preference to non-Muslims to first ask their questions. So if there are any non-Muslims, you are our guests. We want you to be the first ones to give your questions to Dr. Zakir. Second, we ask that everybody ask one question at a time. If you have a second question, you may go to the back of the line and insha'Allah have the chance to ask again. So we will begin, insha'Allah, to give your questions to Dr. Zakir. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Amma abad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Udu ila sabili rabbika bilhikmah. والمؤذن الحسن وجاد ملة حسن رب شلي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه كولي. My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa taala be on all of you. It's a pleasure and honour for me to speak once again in Dubai. And it's an honor for me to be invited again for the Dubai Peace Convention. And Alhamdulillah, I really appreciate the love of the people of Dubai that they have gathered here in such large numbers. And there was a request from the organizers this time that rather than giving a speech, 
Normally we have about one hour speech and about one and a half hour question and answer session. So the organizers requested me that this time why don't we have only question and answer session. So on the request, I agreed because people always complain that we aren't able to ask questions. So as has been the practice in the past couple of years in Bombay and other times, if I speak for more than one day, we at least give one day completely for question and answer session. Keeping in mind, as the chairperson, Brother Musa San Antonio said, that we prefer giving first preference to the non-Muslims to ask any questions. Because today, the non-Muslims are our guests of honor. So I request the non-Muslims, please feel free to ask any questions on Islam, whether it be on Hinduism, on Christianity, on Buddhism, any query that you have, this is your opportunity. Normally we don't have sessions during religious talks, after which there's a question answer session. Alhamdulillah, these conferences have made it easy that after the talk we have a question and answer session. And my session I prefer to give the first opportunity to the non-Muslims. If the questions of the non-Muslims have been exhausted, then inshallah we'll give an opportunity to the Muslims to ask questions. I request the non-Muslim brothers and sisters that they can ask any question on Islam. Even if they want to criticize Islam, no problem. I'm young, I can take it. Whether there's criticism, whether you want to attack any principles of Islam, this is the opportunity. You can ask any question on Islam and comparative religion, whether it be on Islam, whether Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Parsism, this is the opportunity. And I'll try my level best to give you a reply. And I request the volunteers that if there's any non-Muslim in the queue, to give them the first opportunity, because they are today our guests of honor. Is there any non-Muslim brother on microphone number one? Yes, brother, most welcome. I would request them to first mention your name and your profession so that I'll be in a better position to reply to you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Moses, a Christian by faith, and I am a student of engineering. My question, sir, is according to Islam, both Jesus and Muhammad were prophets. But Prophet Isa, besides his miracles, had an unnatural birth and never died, according to Islam. Besides, he has a prominent role to play in the Day of Judgment against Dajjal. Don't you think this special preference given to him by Allah makes him more than just a prophet? Brother Bayan has asked a very good question. He said that Islam believes that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, both of them are prophets of God. But when you compare their lives, we realize that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, Isa salam, had unnatural birth, meaning that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. And he did not die. So don't these two qualities make him superior to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Before I reply to your question, I would like to make it very clear that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any main intervention. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, we are going together. But there is parting of ways. The parting of ways is that many of the Christians, they claim and they think that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity and he was almighty God. First, I'll reply to your these queries that if Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was born miraculously, he had a mother but had no father, so doesn't it make him superior to Prophet Muhammad, indicating that doesn't it mean he's God? 
if you say that Jesus is superior or you claim him to be God because he was born miraculously he had no father Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran chapter number 3 verse number 59 Allah says in the muscle Isa in the like a muscle Adam Halakha kum in Torah summa kala lo kun fayakun the similitude of Jesus peace be upon him in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same as Adam peace be upon him he was made from dust and Allah said be and he was if you say that Jesus is God because he had no father in that context according to the Quran and according to your Bible Adam peace be upon him and no mother and father that makes him a greater God nowhere does the Bible nowhere does Allah say in the Quran that because the person has no father he becomes Almighty God Allah is the best to create he wanted to show people his power normally a human being is born with a father and mother he had an example of Adam al -Salam, who was born without a father and mother you have the example of Bibi Hawa if may Allah be pleased with her who was born without any female the last example pending was a person being born without a father which is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ peace be upon him coming to your second query that we Muslims believe and even the Bible says that Jesus Christ peace be upon him did not die Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 157 158 Allah says that he was not killed neither was he crucified but Allah raised him up unto himself so the question is that if Jesus did not die he's alive isn't he a greater prophet than prophet Muhammad peace be upon him the reply brother is that Isa alayhi salam Jesus Christ peace be upon him was the only messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whose followers mistook him that he claimed divinity there is not a single prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God whose followers mistook that he claimed divinity because he was the only prophet whose followers mistook that he claimed he was God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up alive so that in his second coming he could testify to these people that he never claimed divinity that's what Allah says in the Quran in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse 116 that in his second coming he will tell he'll Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you be my witness I never told them to worship me but I told them Abdullah oh, worship Allah Rabbi wa Rabbakum who's my Lord and your Lord the same thing is mentioned in the gospel of Matthew that in his second coming when people will say oh master oh master did we not do wonders and miracles in your name he will say e evil men I don't even know you to depart from here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty God has raised up Jesus Christ peace be upon alive because in his second coming he will not give any new message because prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the last and final messenger which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Azab chapter 33 verse number 40 after him and after the Quran was revealed nothing new can be added or subtracted from the religion of Islam he will come as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will come not to give any new teaching just to testify to the followers that he never claimed divinity and he is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the major difference between the Muslim and the Christians is that most of the Christians think that Jesus Christ peace be upon him claimed divinity in fact if you read the Bible there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says that I am God or where he says worship me if any Christian can point out a single verse in the Bible a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon him himself says that I am God or where he says worship me I am ready to accept Christianity just now I'm not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. I'm putting my head on the guillotine. In fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the spirit of God gospel of Luke chapter number 11 verse number 20 I with the finger of God cast out devil gospel of John chapter number 5 verse number 30 I can of my own self do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is just for I seek not my will but the will of my father anyone who says I seek not my will but the will of Almighty God is a Muslim so Bible says Jesus Christ peace be upon him was a Muslim he never claimed divinity 
and it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts chapter number 2 verse number 22 E men of Israel listen to this Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you were witness to it a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you were witness to it so Jesus Christ peace be upon him never claimed divinity but he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so brother are you convinced that Jesus is not God I did not say Jesus is God. I did I not. I said, what I, is his position according to Islam? I never said that you said Jesus was God. I'm asking you a question. Are you convinced that Jesus is not God? Yes, I'm convinced of that. But I want to clarify his position in Islam. He, Brother, he before I answer, didn't I tell you he believed that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God? No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim if he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. So do you believe Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God? Yes. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? I believe that Jesus Christ being a prophet was more than a prophet. That doesn't make him God, but his position is unknown. What is his exact position? He's more than a prophet but not God but what is his position he is a prophet of God he is a messenger but he doesn't qualify to be a prophet because he has done uh, like unnatural birth unnatural death and again day of judgment coming brother, such a big, did, such brother a big did you hear my answer if you claim that he is somewhere more than a prophet because he was unnatural born he was born without a father then Adam peace be upon him becomes a bigger but than Adam, Jesus peace be upon him Adam had a death natural death but Adam, there was no misconception among the followers of Adam, peace be upon him, that he claimed divinity. I There's a misconception among the followers of Christians that they claim that he was God. That's the reason Allah kept him alive. Okay. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Now this prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you're a good Christian, if you're a person who believes in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you believe in his teachings, then you also have to believe that there's someone else to come who shall guide you. And that is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So that is the reason I'm saying that if you're a true believer in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, otherwise you're not a true believer. So are you a believer in Prophet Jesus? Yes. Do you believe in Gospel of John chapter 16 verse number 12 to 14? Yes, I do. He's talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to come. So do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? I can't comment right now. So I request you to do more research okay, I will. on your Bible and you can see my video cassette similarities between Islam and Christianity. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. Inshallah, we'll now go to the mic on the left hand side for the brothers. Go ahead with your question, brother. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rajesh and I'm from IT profession. My question is why a religion for a peace? Why a religion? Yeah, why do we need a religion? Like Islam, you're, you're preaching Islam. Brother asked a very good question. That why do you need a religion? Like Islam or any other religion? Brother, if you understand what is the meaning of religion? Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal god or gods that deserve worship. In Islam, the Arabic word used is deen. Deen in Islam means a way of life. So you ask me the question that why do you require a way of life? And why do you require to understand, as Oxford Dictionary says, religion means believing in God. So why do we have to understand God? The reason is that brother, normally when you get a machine, if you get a machine, maybe a complicated machine along with it you get an instruction manual I'm asking the question why do you require the instruction manual 
Why? My brother? To understand. To understand because you don't know the machine. If you allow me to call the human being the machine, you'll have to agree it is the most complicated machine on the face of the earth. So don't you think this requires an instruction manual? The last and final instruction manual for the human being, it is the glorious Quran. Like how you have the instruction manual written by the producer of that equipment or the manufacturer or the inventor. Our manufacturer, our producer, our creator is Almighty God. So he knows what is best for the human being. So based on this, Almighty God has given the rules and regulations. For example, when you buy a DVD player, it tells you if you want to play the DVD, insert the DVD, press the play button. If you want to fast forward, press the FF button. If you want to skip, press the skip button. If you want to stop, press the stop button. Don't drop it from a height, it will get damaged. Don't immerse it in water, it will get spoiled. There's an instruction manual. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last and final instruction manual, the glorious Quran, has written the do's and don'ts for the human being. And Almighty God has only sent one religion. Allah says clearly in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in the dina in the la al-Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Almighty God is Islam. But by the passage of time, whenever Almighty God sent an instruction manual, the manual in passage of time, it changed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that the human beings may not be able to grasp the complete message of the Quran as is mentioned in the Bible in the Gospel of John chapter 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that 1400 years ago, at this time, now the human beings can grasp the last and final message. So Islam came in its complete form 1400 years ago, and the last and final revelation is the Quran. All the previous revelations, the basic message was the same, believing in one God, worshipping the true God, who does not have any image, doesn't have any idol, you have to prostrate, the basic message was the same. But because there were changes in the scriptures, Almighty God revealed the last and final revelation, the Quran. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hijr, chapter 15, verse number 9, that I have revealed the Quran and I will guard from corruption. Now, because this is the last and final revelation, Allah takes it upon himself that he will guard it from any corruption. So that's the reason today, all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and last and final message, the glorious Quran. All the scriptures that came before, since they were time bound, they were meant only for a particular group of people. They were not meant for the whole of humanity. And the message was supposed to be followed till the new message came. Allah didn't require to preserve that message. When the last and final revelation was revealed, and since no other revelation is going to come, Allah takes it upon himself to preserve it. And it's not only meant for the Muslims or the Arabs, it's meant for the whole of humanity, irrespective whether you're staying in Dubai, India, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, America, UK, Canada, all the human beings in the world should follow the last and final revelation and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We'll have the next question from the mic of the sisters on the right-hand sides. So the sister at the mic, you may go ahead with your question. Good evening to uh, everybody. Uh, this is Prashanti Dasri. Uh, I'm from India and uh, I'm actually a born Christian and uh, I migrated to uh, Dubai recently, uh, August 2011. And I happened to, uh, you know, I, uh, I came to know about Islam. Uh, and uh, my brother also here is in Dubai and he keeps telling us about Allah. I'm really convinced and uh, you know with all the uh, whatever knowledge that he shared with me I'm totally convinced uh, and that you know Islam is the straightforward religion and uh, Allah is Alpha his Omega his the beginning and the his last we cannot see Sun more than 10 minutes so how can we see a creator so I'm totally convinced, but there are some questions, uh, you know, that uh, we have doubts because since I'm a born Christian, 
I have uh, four questions, total four questions to uh, Brother uh, Zakir Naik. Uh, the first question is, Brother, I've been uh, listening to your videos, you know, in YouTube that uh, you were uh, talking about the Holy Spirit and uh, you specifically mentioned that uh, Holy Spirit exists. So, uh, I just wanted to know, is Holy Spirit there in Islam according to Quran? And also there is a verse in Old Testament Bible that the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Spirit of God. So, is Holy Spirit a separate from Allah? This is my question. Sisters asked two questions. Question number one is that there is Holy Spirit. What is the meaning and who is this Holy Spirit as per the Quran, as per Islam, as compared to Christianity? And the Bible does say that the Spirit of God hovers above the water. What does it mean? Is the Holy Spirit separate than God? Sister, you asked two questions. If I answer these two questions, will you accept Islam? I have totally four questions. So, uh, okay, so you, want, so you want me to answer the first two and then you'll ask the next two questions? No, no, yeah, absolutely. I'm 70% I'm convinced, you know, whatever knowledge that my brother shared with me and I've been watching your videos, I'm 70% I'm convinced. I'm being very honest and uh, very transparent. So, inshallah, if the four questions answered, yes, if you're convinced 100% will accept Islam, inshallah, I will accept Islam. <laughs> The sister asked two questions and after she asked the other two questions that the Bible does mention about Holy Spirit. What is the reference of Holy Spirit in the Quran? What the definition of Holy Spirit, it is not the same as mentioned in Islam because when the Christians, when they talk about the Holy Spirit, they assume it is part of the Trinity, the triune God though the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible, no way. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When they say Father, they think about Almighty God, like a Santa Claus sitting in the heavens with the earth at the footstool. When they talk about the Son, they think about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you know, like Jeffrey Hunter in the movie King of Kings, you know, with blue eyes and good nose, not a polyp nose like a Jew. When they talk about the Holy Spirit, they think about dove that came in Pentecost or when Jesus Christ was being baptized. What is the spirit that's mentioned in the Quran? What I believe is Quran talks about Archangel Gabriel. You are one of the angels sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of his roles was to get the revelation to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and many other roles he has got. So we believe in the Archangel. So like that, if you say that there is a spirit, we have no problem. But he's not part of the triune God. And both are separate. The angel, the archangel Gabriel is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the spirit even mentioned in the Bible is separate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They aren't joined. This is the teaching of the church. Because the word Trinity doesn't exist anywhere in the Bible. But if you read the Quran, the Trinity is mentioned twice in the Quran. In Surah Nisa chapter number 4, verse number 171, where it says, Wala taqulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. In khairul lakum. This is stop it's better for you. So Quran says, Wala taqulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. And the same message is repeated in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. It says, Lakat kafr lazina kalu. They are doing kuf. Those who say that God is three in one. So the word Trinity appears in the Quran twice and both the places it says it is wrong to use the word Trinity. And in the Quran, it is mentioned that don't say Trinity, but the word Trinity doesn't exist in the Bible. The closest verse to Trinity in the Bible is the first epistle of John, chapter number 5, verse number 7, which says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So this verse if you read the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, revised by Thaidu scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars, 
they say that this verse of first epistle of john chapter number five verse number seven is an interpolation is a fabrication is a concoction and they've thrown this verse out of the bible so the verse in the bible that was not talking directly about trinity but the closest to trinity is thrown out by the scholars of christianity as a fabrication as a concoction so but natural the spirit and almighty god they're two different entities they're not the same and in the Quran, it talks about Archangel Gabriel. He is the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope that answers the question, sister. Yes, brother. I would like to know your other two questions. Yeah, uh, my third question is, um, which is related to Holy Spirit only. Uh, all the prophets, all the man of God, like uh, Prophet Abraham, Prophet Isaac, and uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon them. Uh, all the prophets, they used to intercede with Allah. They used to interact with Allah. So to interact with Allah, because they are all the chosen ones, they must be gifted by some strength. It might be the grace of God. So it is a power. There is that some power so that they are able to interact with Allah. So what is that power? So what is my understanding? I mean, what was my understanding all these days was with the help of Holy Spirit, all the prophets were interceding with Allah. Is that true? Sister, the question that the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intercede with Almighty God. Then she said interaction with Almighty God. Sister, the English word intercede and interaction are two different things. So is your question intercede or interaction? Intercede. Intercede means that someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Someone intercedes on somebody else's behalf. Now this you have to realize that when you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need anyone to intercede. The Quran says in Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, verse number 60, you ask me and I will answer your prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require anyone to intercede with him. Why? And people give the example that, you know, when you go in a court of law, when you're presenting your case to the judge, you hire lawyers. So like that, the messengers of God are our lawyers. This is okay and logical for a judge who is a human being. Because the judge does not know who is the criminal, who is the robber. So the lawyer helps the judge to understand who is a criminal, who is a robber, who is not. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in my gap. He does not require anyone to prove to him who is good, who is bad. So it is wrong to say intercede. Yes, someone can pray. A messenger can pray for other human beings. And Allah says in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require any intercession except who he wills on the day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, Allah says, he will give permission to certain people to intercede. And this, the hadith saying, that this special favor will be given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So what we know from the history of all the other scriptures, as well as the Quran, as well as the Hadith, that the messengers of God, they interacted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They prayed for others. But if we use the Prophet to intercede, that means if I pray that if I go through this Prophet, following the commandments of Prophet is good. But if I pray to somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what many of the human beings do. They pray to human beings saying they are closer to Almighty God. So if we pray through Him, God will accept our prayer faster and better. This is wrong. We have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. These prophets of God, they are messengers. Yes, they have special powers. They have special powers. They can speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses certain men amongst men, chooses certain men to communicate his message to the other human beings. These chosen people of Almighty God, we call as prophets or we call as messengers of God. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selects certain human beings in the world 
to communicate his message to the other human beings. These are called as messengers of God. So there is communication between the messenger and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that does not mean that human beings can use these messengers to intercede. That if they pray to these messengers, Almighty God will listen to us. This is the teaching of the church. That you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and all your sins will be forgiven. This concept doesn't exist in Islam and doesn't exist even in true Christianity. It is the teaching of the church sister. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, uh, my final question is uh, uh, in New Testament, uh, I mean, uh, in one book, Book of Acts, Paul mentioned about uh, tongues. What do you uh, say about tongues in New Testament? I mean, according to Islam, is that it's totally eliminated, it's not there, or, or the gift of tongues existed at that time? Just ask the question that Paul said about tongues. If you give me the reference, I'm in a better position. There are many things mentioned in the Bible about tongues. There are many verses in the Quran which speaks about tongue. If you give me the reference what you're talking about, I'll be in a better position to reply to you. But generally, there are many statements in the Bible talking about tongues. And also says, if you read the gospel, if you read the gospel of Mark, it says that anyone who is a believer, he will be able to understand foreign tongues and speak foreign tongues. That means if you are a believer in God, then you can understand foreign languages and you can speak foreign languages. So that's what I did when I had a debate with Dr. William Campbell. I gave him a 100 rupee note. And the Indian 100 rupee note, as you may be aware, since we have got 22 official languages, I read in English 100 rupees, Hindi says sau rupiah, I asked him to read the other 20 languages, if he's a believer, and he could not. There are many references in the Quran talking about tongues. If you read the Quran, the Quran says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 22, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the human beings in different colors and tongues, so that you should recognize each other, so that the men of understanding will understand. Furthermore, the Quran says that on the day of judgment, your tongues, your organs, your hands, they will be witness for you. What you did right, what you did wrong. There are various hadith of the Prophet talking about the tongue. So there are many references in the Quran talking about the tongue. There are many references in the Bible that talk about tongue and how to test a believer. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. And my final question. Okay, uh, I have a Muslim friend and he suggested me uh, to read Bible Old Testament. Okay, he specifically mentioned to uh, follow, go through the Old Testament in Bible. And then he said read Quran. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned specifically, uh, you know, that uh, Quran is the final uh, revelation given by Allah. So uh, as a Muslim, what do you suggest me? Uh, because my friend being a Muslim, he said, follow Bible, Old Testament, and then read Quran. So... Sister, the question that one of her friends told her that first read the Old Testament, then read the Quran. Sister, it's not the must. If there is something like the Old Testament and the New Testament, then there's something like the Last Testament in the Quran. So when the Christians say Old and New Testament, this is the last and final testament of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I am asking you the question. Suppose you have different versions and editions of a book. For example, you have gone to a medical college. I was in a medical college, you know, Prophet Keith Moore wrote some books. And his book had first edition, second edition, third edition. So would you read the first edition or the latest edition? Of course, I'll go for the latest. Latest, correct. Yes, if you really love the first edition, you know, I'm a fan of the first edition. Then I said, no problem, read the first edition, then read the last edition. So if you're so much hooked on to the Old Testament, and you know your Old Testament is close to your heart. Then the Quran says in Sulaim Imran chapter 3 verse 64, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawaim bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as been us in you. Then I would say that if you are so much hooked on to the Old Testament, no problem, read the Old Testament, then read the Quran, at least agree what is common. And when we read the Old Testament, New Testament and the Quran, we come to know that the thing that is common in these scriptures is that there is one God and he deserves to be worshipped. 
He has got no image. He is not begotten. It further says that Jesus Christ peace is not God. And both the scriptures say that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So sister, now are you prepared to accept Islam? Of course, yes. <laughs> Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yes, I believe there is only one God. Do you believe that Jesus is not God but is a messenger of God? Yes, I believe Jesus is a messenger. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Yes, I believe Prophet Muhammad is the last and the final messenger. Sister, is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Sorry? Is there anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, nobody is forcing me. Are you accepting out of your free will? Yes. Because in Islam, to force anyone to accept Islam is haram. It's haram in the religion and it's haram, it's prohibited in most of the countries, I believe, even in Dubai. To force anyone to accept a religion is forbidden. So you're accepting out of free will, sister? Yes. But that is the reason I asked you many questions. MashaAllah. Out of free will. <laughs> hope. I hope no one is bribing you. No. You know, because in India, when after many people accept Islam, the CID, the police go there and ask how much dollars Dr. Zakir I give you. <laughs> I tell them I have given them currency of the Akhirah. Currency of the Akhirah and that's accepted. So inshallah sister, I will say in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wahashadru Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Warusuluhu Warusulu I bear witness I bear witness that that there is no God that there is no God but Allah but Allah and I bear witness and I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad Prophet Muhammad is the messenger is the messenger and servant of Allah and servant of Allah Mashallah sister you are a Muslim yeah. and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your effort <laughs> and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that to guide you further and inshallah give you the best in this world as well as the akhirah and grant you a place in paradise inshallah sister thank you